On today's episode of Locked On Mariners, Jordan Schusterman of Cespedes Family Barbecue and Fox Sports MLB joins me to talk all about the M's. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Locked On Mariners podcast. It is Tuesday, August 16th, 2022, and thank you so much for making Locked On Mariners your first listen of the day. This show is free and available on all platforms with new episodes dropping every Monday through Friday. I am your host, Tidy Gonzalez. I cover the Mariners over at InsideTheMariners.com for Fan Nation over on the Sports Illustrated Network. Be sure to follow Locked On Mariners on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. Follow Inside the Mariners at Inside Mariners, and you can follow me at Dane Gonzalez. It's D-A-N-E-G-N ZLZ. And if this is your first time listening to or watching the Locked On Mariners podcast, welcome to the show. If you like what you hear, give us a follow or subscribe wherever you're listening to this. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Jordan Schusterman, who makes up one half of the Cespedes family barbecue duo and currently writes about Major League Baseball for Fox Sports, has been a Mariners fan for around a decade and was kind of Enough to join me for today's episode of Locked On Mariners to talk all about the M. So, without further ado, here's our discussion. I am now pleased to be joined here on the Locked On Mariners podcast by Jordan Schusterman, one half of the Cespedes family barbecue duo. And you can find his and Jake Mista's work over at Fox Sports MLB. Jordan, thank you for taking the time. How are you? Oh, I am so good. Thank you so much for the invite. Uh, I am wearing my Rocky Mountain Vibes hat. Nice. RIP, a minor league baseball team that was that was killed uh, by the commissioner. But uh, they are an independent league team now. And even though they were not a Mariners affiliate, since they were the Vibes, I figure that we roll with the good vibes only trend. And uh, they're a well spiritual affiliate. Experience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, well said. We are. Talking on Monday, just for transparency's sake here, this is not Tuesday, like the day that this is actually going out, but Monday marks the 10-year anniversary of a little perfect game thrown by one man named Felix Hernandez. And yesterday, that was getting a little bit challenged for the last perfect game in MLB history by Drew Rasmussen of the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, of course... As you do any time any perfect game is thwarted on Twitter, you post a GIF of Felix Hernandez laughing. But because you are so tuned into MLB in general, because of your job over at Fox Sports and, and, and everything in general, we love the game of baseball in general. Do you still find yourself rooting against pitchers that are, you know, tempting fate here that are, that are trying to throw the first perfect game since Felix or... Are you just in it for the love of the game? You know, it's cool for them because perfect games are so rare still. <laughs> yeah, so Drew Rasmussen was a great example of like, he is a young pitcher who I enjoy watching. He's a good dude. I, I had a good interaction with him when he was at Oregon State on one of our road trips mm -hmm. many years ago, like like watching him pitch. But he's not in the category of someone that I, like. like, here's the thing we all have to accept, right? We've made it 10 years. But, like, we all have to accept that, like, there will be another perfect game thrown, right? Like, we all have to accept that that is going to happen at some point. So I've, I've had many thoughts, right? We, and I, I remember talking about this on, on, on our podcast last year. It's just like, what, who is okay? Who am I going to be okay with throwing it, right? And to mm -hmm. me, the two categories are the best pitcher, the very best pitchers in baseball, right? So, like, or even the Clayton Kershaw level, right? So, he's had a few close calls. And it's like, if Kershaw does it, it's hard to be mad. It's like, he's one of the best pitchers of all time, too. Like, he is a person that probably deserves to have a perfect game, right? Not because it's, you know, it requires so much luck, right? So, if it's him, if it's Scherzer, if it's DeGrom, I will tip my cap and I will say, yep, that's going to happen because they're one of the best. And then there is admittedly, and this is just me sounding like a there's like the people in baseball who I've been fortunate enough to know personally. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I want them to throw it because they're my friends. <laughs> and mm. so there's those two buckets. <laughs> Everyone else, no, no, thank you. <laughs> and so, mm. and so that is kind of how I think about it. And Drew Rasmussen was just like, you know, there are way lamer ones that I'm sure where, I, where I'm like actively rooting against it. This one was more of just a like, 
this would be kind of lame. And so Jorge Mateo yeah. saved us. Yes. Thank you, Jorge Mateo. Based Jorge Mateo, for sure. All right. So let's talk Julio, because Julio is great. And Julio makes me happy. And Julio makes me smile. And I'm sure Julio makes you smile as well. Uh, and everyone in uh, the Mariners' Twitter sphere. And if Julio doesn't make you smile, I mean, you have a cold, cold, cold heart. And there is no other way around it. Uh, Julio had, obviously, a great performance at the Home Run Derby about a month ago. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of uh, baseball folks in general, you know, we look at the Home Run Derby as this cool event, but it's not like a huge thing for us. It's it's more so for for casual fans, for for folks that like go into the event, for folks that like just tune in, tune in on ESPN and watching people hit dingers, which is great. Total, a lot of entertainment there. But for sure, it definitely... If you have success at the home run derby, it does boost your status. It does it just undoubtedly boosts your status as a player. What do you think that did for Julio and his status as he comes up here as a 21 year old rookie? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, so I was lucky enough to be there, you know, in person. Yeah. Um, you know, get, get getting to cover the All Star game and, and and the home run derby for Fox. And I always tell people if you and and this is this is true for, for you know obviously for Seattle next year, uh, go to the derby. Don't worry about the All Star game. Not worth your money and time. Uh, if you could be yeah. like, I, I cannot imagine not being at a Derby in person now. Cause it is just so great. And like when you, you, you feel it. And it was the same feeling of when Vlad jr. Uh, who at, was much more famous, I would say coming into that Derby on, even on the national stage, um, than Julio was even this year and not that Julio that didn't already have a great first half, but it was the same kind of feeling in 2019 in Cleveland. Uh, when it was just like, oh my God, it's the Vlad show. And I know, same thing, you know, Vlad didn't end up winning, but Vlad very much kind of won that evening. And that's kind of how it felt with Julio. Now, in that case, you know, he lost to Pete. In this case, Julio loses to Juan Soto, who's only two years older than him and is obviously mm -hmm. a star in his own right and also, you know, extremely young. And Juan Soto is one of my favorite players too, but that is what it felt like. And so just the whole All Star experience was very much a like, and I think Larry Stone wrote, wrote a couple great pieces about this in the Times. It's just like, this is now like he's not just Seattle's anymore now, right? Like he is, right? Obviously, we're so mm -hmm. lucky that he's on the Mariners, but like he has ascended yeah. to that tier that everybody mm -hmm. knows that he's he's one of those guys. And like this is what we wanted, right? We can't be, <laughs> we of course we want to be protective and and be like no, like you know we love him more than all you guys do. But like it's also amazing to have a Seattle Mariner be like on that level of yeah. uh, you know an Acuna, uh, a Vlad Jr., a Soto. Uh, Tatis. I mean, that's, you know, obviously now it's a little bit of a different conversation, but um, yeah. And, and that's, what's, that's, what's awesome about it. Yeah. I think the, just his performance in general was, was massive. And to, to see a, a Mariner on that stage, be able to perform in that way. Plus we've had some Mariners get into the Derby in the past and it's been uh, <laughs> not great. Not great. Think about Robinson Cano. You think about Brett Boone and who boy. Yeah. Those, uh, those events did not go particularly well for those guys. <laughs> so it was nice to actually see a Mariner get into the Derby, do really well. And make a name for himself. I mean, you, you saw folks, you know, celebrities tweeting about him. You saw guys like Steph Curry tweeting at him and, and everything around that time. That's cool. It's cool. He's a Seattle Mariner and people know who he is. It's awesome. Yeah. And and also, like, I think him losing is actually best case scenario for next year. You know, right. Like, like I think that, like, sets it up nicer for assuming I would be stunned, you know, help assuming how people not, you know, he'll do it next year and then that will be, you know, even better. So. Something to look yeah. forward to for, for next time. You're listening to Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. More coming up from my conversation with Jordan in just a moment. But real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Ready? Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again chills let me introduce you to your new favorite cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture real cookie dough chunks and of course they're covered in 100 percent real chocolate all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it plus it's healthy for you cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them run to built.com to snag a box for you and the family and get 15 percent off with promo code locked on 15 that's l-o-c-k-d-o-n-1-5 for 15% off your order at built.com. 
Obviously, the Mariners kicked off the Derby with Luis Castillo. Huge deal. One of the biggest deals at the deadline, if not for uh, a guy named Juan Soto getting traded. Probably the biggest deal at the deadline. Um, now, there's a lot of people that are kind of on the fence or they're on one very extreme end of the fence uh, about what the Mariners did after acquiring Luis, Luis Castillo. And I was I was one of the people that were kind of critical of what they did after acquiring Luis Castillo thought they kind of just added around the fringes didn't think that they added the impact that you know post Castillo deal really kind of um, asked for and so I, I'm curious what your thoughts were on what they did after the Castillo deal yeah so I I definitely understood that sentiment although I think unlike this past off season and we don't necessarily have to litigate and be like oh well look what's you know Seager and Semyon and Story and Cray and all these guys yeah. have done but like I really just didn't see that many options out there as to as to what we were talking about especially because so many of them were first base DH corner types which sure. the Mariners already have a million of and so yes would Brandon Drury have been a nice boost that could have been, it felt like a little bit more substantial than a Jake lamb. Like, like, sure. Like I, I, I do think that that's, that's probably true, but I just didn't see that many guys that I would have been thrilled about um, that. And, and like, it didn't really seem like Wilson Contreras was ever a part of the mix. And obviously his price turned out to be, you know, really, really, really high. And so while I agree that it's still a little bit frustrating sometimes watching this offense and we want more, 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 uh, I, <laughs> The Castillo thing is, is so exciting. And, and, and I also do yeah. think it was a matter of not necessarily optics, but just sequencing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if the Castillo thing happens five minutes before the deadline, you know, the vibes are a little bit different, right? But it was sure. because of just the sequence of events and how, you know, the last deadline day went down. And this has been true with, with DePoto in the past and all the trades that he's made. It's, the timing is sometimes a little bit weird. <laughs> and so right. it kind of comes a little bit later, a little bit early, and then you're kind of left wondering and wanting more. And so... Mm -hmm. That's why I do totally get that sentiment, but there wasn't enough out there where I was like, oh my, more like in this, in the off season where it was like, oh, you know, say Suzuki or, or Correa or, or, you know, right. story. And it doesn't matter how they've turned out, right? Like, that's how we felt at the time. And, you know, they didn't get any of those guys. And so, and it, you know, before the Reds trade, and, you know, that's worked out in, in you know, varying levels mm -hmm. of success. Um, yeah. But that's why I was not as pressed about that. And, and Castillo is just like, I mean, maybe, I don't know if you want to talk about him separately, but it's really, it's really amazing. And, you know, we're, we're going to watch him tonight. I know this episode's coming out on Tuesday. So, you know, we'll see how he does against the angels, but it's, it's really incredible having, having someone like him um, even more than, you know, adding a guy like Robbie Ray. So um, yeah, that's kind of how I felt on the deadline. Yeah. It's massive. Uh, it's massive. Cause I mean, you know, you think about the postseason and how pitching has carried this team this far and to be able to add like a legitimate ace who can go toe to toe with anyone. I mean, we saw it the other night against Garrett Cole, like he's been able to go against Garrett Cole twice mm -hmm. now for the Mariners and both of his starts in a Mariners uniform and has out dueled him. Like even on the night where Garrett Cole was pitching out of his mind, Castillo was just that much better. Just that much better. That's insane. That's insane to have that in your back pocket right now. Yeah. And so he's going up against Otani tonight. That's a lot of fun. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, talk, talk about Luis Castillo. Gush about him. I, I want to hear about it. I want to hear how, how excited yeah. you are about Luis Castillo being a Seattle Mariner. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I, I, I was just listening to uh, everyone's favorite podcast, you know, The Wheelhouse. Uh, listen to Jerry DePoto just blab and blab and blab for, uh, <laughs> you know, hours on end, which I, I appreciate. I mean, that's a whole other discussion of the, the Jerry De DePoto transparency, uh, or trans transparency uh, uh, conundrum. Um, but uh, he was talking about how, how, you know, how long they've wanted to get Castillo. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, I can echo that just like, he's just been one of, one of my favorite pitchers to watch. And, and as far as fastball, dominance from a starter it's a really short list um of guys that have that uh not to mention you know the, the the pure velocity right a lot of the other guys like garrett cole that was that was what was so fun about watching um the cole castillo matchup is that cole it's it's really a four seam you know up you know upper half just like blowing you away like it is just you know as as we obviously saw with with houston and whatnot obviously verlander is that type too um cole de right like it is it is just just riding right past you at 100 looks like 105 castillo throwing 97 with the movement that it has and now he does have a four scene too on top of obviously the changeup is amazing and, and then the sliders i think pretty underrated at this point 
uh, even though it's clearly his third best pitch is it's it's an amazing it's an amazing array of weapons uh and and mm. that kind of velocity too is i think something that over the last couple of years with gilbert and with kirby we've started to get used to right because velocity has just not been a thing for the seattle mariners rotation basically besides james paxton for years i mean it just mm. hasn't it has since Felix lost it. It's just not been a thing. Like I can't remember many other starters and now they have four of them, right. That are regularly <laughs> throwing 95. And I know we're worried about Robbie Ray's velocity, but now that's back to well above average for a left-hander. Um, and like, but Castillo in particular, it's, it's just a, it's just a hell of a mix. And it's the kind of thing that pitchers, and this is a broader commentary about, about, you know, the game and why we need to stay on starting pitchers and why it's bad to have relievers coming. So it's like, Pitchers make you want to tune in, right? And when I see that Luis, can, you know, after a loss like Sundays, right? Yeah. You know, vibes are not great. It's like, damn, that was a, you know, crappy loss. Okay. It's like, oh, I turn to Monday. I'm like, oh, Luis Castillo's pitching tomorrow. We're, we're good. Like, well, it's the combination of like confidence and like excitement mm -hmm. to watch again. Yeah. And the Mariners rotation has just not, and we can you know, get back to the perfect game if we want to do that. Is this like, that it was just Felix, obviously, for years, right? And then there was yeah. a little bit of Paxton in there, right? And, you know, Iwakuma was, was a big part of that occasionally. But very – they have not had this amount of pitchers that I am excited to watch in so long, um, not to mention, obviously, all the guys they have coming out of the bullpen. So that's what's been so exciting about the season, even with all the ups and downs. Looking back on the Mariners' rotations of old, did you just besmirch the great name of Chris Young and Kevin Millwood? <laughs> <laughs> i mean hey well to be fair millwood was was the uh the 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 og uh combined no-no right? yeah 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 so exactly. he gave us our first uh five or six i can't remember if it was five or can six, you can you can you name every uh, pitcher that was uh, we that to... threw that yes i don't know if i'm getting it in order but i know that it's prior litke wilhelmson league i think Mm -hmm. or millwood first um i'm pretty mm -hmm. sure i don't i don't think i got that i mean i'm not sure if i got that in the right order millwood, the furbush, one i would often forget millwood furbush prior licky league uh licky did pitch and then league and then will Helmson. so no will Helmson. no will Helmson pitch will Helmson pitch furbush prior okay, licky so league and will Helmson. I, I don't know if it was in that order though i'm just going off a of reference <laughs> i'm going off a of baseball reference so there you go. There. there you go. Wow. So 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 Furbush and Litke both pitched in that game. Yes. Oh yes, they God. both pitched That's in that game. Anyway, so sorry. <laughs> sorry to besmirch Kevin Millwood, but you yes. get you get you get the point. Um it's it's really mm -hmm. a a a a change of a change of pace. And honestly, it's just catching up to the rest of the league, right? Like that's been part of it is as is velocity has just like burnt like blown up over the last decade. The Mariners have just not been a part of that. And so, mm -hmm. and so like, that's, what's been, what's been so fun. You know, we still got, we still got Marco and flex, you know, chucking in there at 89, but um, that's, <laughs> we can just maybe save that for another day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's not talk about that. Let's just, uh, let's worry about that another day. <laughs> let's talk about the good stuff. Let's talk about the stuff that makes us happy here. So, uh, all right, let's delve a little bit more into some, uh, some Mariners history. Cause, uh, that obviously went so well last time. <laughs> we did that. So let's, let's talk about, uh, the, the man you and Jake call, uh, old Jerry D Jerry DePoto. He's made a lot of trades over the last seven years. Quite a few trades, quite a few trades coming out of sure Seattle has. over the last seven or so years. I think we can all pretty much agree that the best one is the the Ty France deal, the Andres Munoz deal, the Taylor Trammell deal um, for for Austin Nola. But then after that point, obviously there's the there's the Kelnick deal and being able to get Cano's contract off of the books. There's uh, the Hanager Segura deal. There's a lot of deals that he's made, a lot of pretty good deals for the Mariners that have helped the Mariners uh, in a multitude of ways. What would you say, though, is the second best trade Jerry DePoto has made as Mariners general manager and president of baseball operations? I love this question so much, and I also hate it because it's so hard. Now, <laughs> fortunately, as the purveyor of the official DePoto tracker Google spreadsheet, I have yes. them all in front of me. And so I can reference it very easily. Um, and, oh man. I mean, the thing is like, 
if it's just pure like value, like what you got for like what you gave up instead of just like the overwhelming big names, like there are some mm-hmm. smaller additions that were like, I know this sounds stupid, but like getting Tom Murphy for a minor leaguer that never made it out of a ball. Right. You know, like those, yeah. like there are a lot of those trades that have been really successful. Um, and, but again, when you make so many of them, but again, the reverse of that is giving up Chris Taylor, right? So it's like that those have kind mm-hmm. of, those kind of, you know, balance out. So man, in terms of the second best trade, I mean, I think that the, that the Hanniger Segura one, mm-hmm. when you consider, and look, Cattell Marte obviously has yeah. blossomed into a, a, an amazing player and better, better than Hanniger and better than Segura, right? When he's been healthy, right? But when you consider that Segura was then part of what got JP, um, I think that, and obviously what Mitch has been, even with his health concerns, I still think that that is a Mariners yeah. win, even if it's pretty even. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, part of that is what the D-backs have just been irrelevant. And so Cattell Marte, we have a nice like, scene. And, and you know, Walker has kind of have, has been up and down, but still generally pretty good. So, yeah, I, I but I still think that that is, again, like, like I said, like, to be able to eventually then move Segura, I think was a really was a really big one. Um, yeah, that, that and keeps plus, giving I mean, right Segura after that, is. and plus Segura before that, you know, gave you an All Star season. Like you got really good value out of Segura before yeah. even dealing him and getting JP mm-hmm. Crawford out of that. So yeah, huge, huge. And then uh, you got Santana mm-hmm. in that deal, which ended up becoming what Isaiah Campbell, I think. So yeah, yep, yep, pretty good deal. Yeah, and then I mean. Uh, and, then, and you know, and then, and then obviously, like we'll be we'll be litigating the the Kelnick trade forever. Um, yeah. But I'm torn on that one because part of me is like, getting off Cano is a win no matter mm-hmm. what. Like that mm-hmm. is just no matter what happens with Kelnick yeah. and and how good Edwin Diaz is. Like that's. But also, why do I care about John Stans? pocket like i don't true right? so it's like true it, it goes both ways like like on one hand it's like well getting off of that did give them presumably flexibility even still this year and like that's the <laughs> thing right like that yeah <laughs> that contract is still going and this this yeah. is I think this is the last season of it right so yeah. like that flexibility for this year and last year but again i'm torn because i i shouldn't care about flexibility even though i have to acknowledge that it is within kind of the parameters we're working within and so when if you acknowledge that that is a truth that there is clearly some payroll things that matter getting off that contract is a big deal um mm-hmm. but i don't want to overrate it too much so anyway for sure yeah. for sure all right i like the answer though i like that answer i like the uh i, I like the hanniger and segura deal a lot still even to this day uh, i think there's a lot of cool moving pieces to it as well <laughs> just a lot of cool things like that branch out from it can i can i give one more just as a, as sure. a joke yeah, how about yeah. how about acquiring Christopher Negron uh, for cash considerations from the Diamondbacks, and then have him become your first base coach? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and triple A manager who everyone loves. Triple A manager, coach, right? First win a, win a champ, then, win a championship yeah. with the Rainiers, and then go on to be the first base coach. Yeah, I think that deal worked mm-hmm. out pretty well for the Mariners organization. <laughs> exactly and for and for him and for him so yeah absolutely uh, you know that was a a bit of a goofy one but you know just wanted wanted to mention that one so got more on the way with jordan schusterman in just a moment but real quick a reminder this episode of lockdown mariners is brought to you by bet online betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds lines and games find reviews and news of every league including major league baseball nfl nba nhl combat sports esports and even golf bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action bet online is where the game starts all right so the mariners are the wild card two right now as we currently talk maybe they're the wild card one by the time that this is airing we'll see we'll see Things can happen. Uh, a lot of things can happen. Uh, and, and you know, they've been going in and out of wildcard one, wildcard two, wildcard three for the past month or so, uh, pretty much ever since they got back into the conversation. And it seems like, I mean, I, I honestly think that the, the Mariners might be the third best team in the American League right now. Um, so, and, and I think that there's a very, very good shot that they, they end the drought finally uh, this year. So let's go off of that as a couple of Mariners fans here and play some Would You Rather. Would you rather, Jordan, be guaranteed 
to see the Mariners clinch their first playoff berth in 20 years at T-Mobile Park or go to the Mariners' first playoff game in 20 years, no matter the location? This might be controversial. Uh, the first one, clinching mm. the berth. Because yeah. the excitement... Here, here's, here's, here's what I'll say. Every year, and again, I, I, I was just tweeting about this earlier. Like, I've only been a Mariners fan for about a decade, right? Like, I didn't grow up with this team. I picked them because of Felix Fernandez. Like, I didn't have a team growing up. Felix was my favorite pitcher. I was reading Lookout Landing. I loved staying up late, late to watch the team on LB TV in high school. And like, I just fell in, even though they sucked ass. Like, I was in. I <laughs> loved it. I was like, I'm a Mariners mm -hmm. fan. Great. So it's like, I don't have the weight of 20 years or all the history. Like, I don't have that, right? And so that's that perspective. At the same time, like over the last 10 years, when I like, I, one of my favorite things in baseball is watching teams clinch the postseason, right? Not even winning postseason games, like, but knowing that you, that your season is not going to end, whether it's winning a division or even clinching, going to the wildcard game, like that is something that I think about for the Mariners is like making it and like being able to celebrate and relax. If they get into the postseason this year, which I also think that they will, It'll be amazing, right? But it's getting mm. it in is going to be fun. As soon as the game starts, it's going to be miserable. It is going to oh, be yeah. when I watch postseason baseball. I'm like, I, I don't, I'm losing my mind over you know games in May when they're 20 games under 500. Like this is, it's 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 horrible, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I want it to happen, but also just the no matter what happens where no matter where it happens, like they could just get there kick right like that's no fun like yeah. of course being there of course oh i'm, I'm at the first marriage game postseason or whatever 100 percent would rather be there when they clinch like not even close <laughs> yeah so yeah especially if you're guaranteed like going in like i know they're going to win this game they are going to clinch i am going to see that moment yeah i think that's the i think that's the answer plus like i would be an emotional wreck as well at the start of the game i mean because like you know i've been a seahawks fan for my entire life as well those playoff games, even when they were the best team in the NFL, clearly best team in the NFL by miles and miles, and they were like going up against like the six seed Saints in 2013, I was still a nervous wreck. Was still a nervous wreck. So even if the Mariners had it in the bag, if they were going into that into a playoff game against the Detroit Tigers right now, I'd be a nervous wreck. Uh, so yeah, I would absolutely take a, a guaranteed win and a guaranteed uh, clinched berth. Even though that you know you and I were talking off air before we uh, we started this about how you know I live in Toronto and I selfishly am kind of hoping that maybe Toronto gets the wild card once so I can go see the Mariners' first playoff game in 20 years. But also a part of me is like I also don't want to do that one because it's going to be very expensive but two yeah. because i i mean i just i don't know if i'm going to be able to contain myself especially in a crowd full of blue jays fans that sounds like a living hell yes. honestly <laughs> <laughs> especially if it goes poorly, right and i've thought that feels like a too. like a legitimately traumatizing event for myself <laughs> yeah well and there's there's a bunch of different scenarios for where they could be playing right and obviously we should right. be you know, getting too far ahead of ourselves here, but you know, it could be Cleveland. Right. And if it's Cleveland, yeah. I'm totally going to be trying to get to that. Um, because you know, I live in Indiana now and like, that's, I, you know, whatever, even, even Chicago, I mean, I've thought not all about the white Sox, but like, who knows they're too back. Right. It feels like they, right. they're, they suck and they're out of it, but they're too back. So there's a, so many different scenarios as your point, but I am, but to, to the, would you rather question? Like I, I, again, I obviously have other work obligations to cover the 29 other teams, but I really am trying to get out to consider flying out to Seattle for one of the, the last home games. Um, whether that's that, that Texas series or that, that Oakland series at the end of the season. Um, cause I just, I mean, I, cause I, for those that don't know, I've only been to Seattle once. Um, I've only mm -hmm. been, uh, one time it was part of, uh, at the end of one of our summer road trips that we did way back in 2015. So, uh, got to see two or three games, uh, sat in Kings court. This is thankfully the last year Felix was good. <laughs> um, and we saw him <laughs> actually beat the Rays, which was really cool. Oh, nice. Uh, I've nice. told the story before, but yeah, Austin Jackson, go ahead, home run in the eighth. Uh, oh it was, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a fantastic game, obviously an amazing <laughs> memory. Um, but that's, yeah, that's it. That's the only time in the Seattle. So, uh, I, I would love to get back there. I, I thought I, I, last year I almost pulled the trigger in September, 
uh, and mm-hmm. couldn't. And so I'm, I'm, I'm scheming. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast. Kept you on here way longer than I was supposed to. I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but I do appreciate you, uh, you coming no. on. Uh, and uh, all right. Well, let uh, the folks know where can they find you and uh, Jake and, and all the work you're doing. Mm-hmm. Sure. So uh, all of our, our main, you know, writing is on, on foxsports.com. Um, so that's, that's the main, the main gig there. Uh, and then, and then, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we did a college baseball podcast. I know people wondered, Oh, you guys haven't done an MLB podcast. Uh, we used to do baseball barbecue on the, on the ringer podcast network that ended for the season. And then we didn't really get a show up and going. Um, and then we were doing college baseball pod for D one baseball. Uh, we covered D three baseball for fun too. Um, I can't say anything officially, but I just, just stay tuned. We're working on it. It's not, it is not lost. We, we are aware that people would like us to have a podcast again and it is, we are making progress. So I will leave it at mm. that and uh, hopefully you will be able to hear. So yeah, just, you know, follow us, says with BBQ on Twitter. And then if you want just my Mariners tweets, uh, J underscore Schusterman underscore, which you can see there on screen. So, well, thank you again to Jordan for joining us and thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast today. My name is Siding Gonzalez. You can follow the show over on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow Inside the Mariners at Inside Mariners and you can follow me at Dane Gonzalez is D-A-N-E G-N-Z-L-Z and you can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode and thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. Now make your second listen the Locked On MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league follow the number one daily league-wide podcast locked on mlb on the odyssey app youtube and wherever you get your podcasts just like us and with that have yourself a beautiful baseball day and we're going to see you tomorrow peace